good morning to worship at Memorial Presbyterian Church, Appleton. We have to be sure to put that Appleton on there because believe it or not, if you Google it, there's a Memorial Presbyterian Church in another town. So we are Appleton and we welcome you who are present here in the sanctuary as well as those who are online uh, in our live stream. If you are present, please uh, either make your presence known on the live stream or there are fr uh, fellowship pads or friendship pads on the center aisle. Fill them out and pass them down the row and then pass them back and note who is worshiping with you this morning. As far as I know, we have just one announcement and I'm going to read it because it came from Tom Neal who said, hello gardeners, the Petersons will be bringing the compost used to amend the soil this week. I had hoped to start preparing the soil for planting this Thursday, but the forecast now calls for rain most of the day. Let's try to get started Tuesday, April 25th instead. We can meet at 3 p.m., got that, 3 p.m., bring a shovel and a wheelbarrow. If you have one, don't, don't let that stop you. Yeah. We will do what we can on Tuesday and then continue work on Thursday. If you can be there, please email Tom at neilsteino at aol.com. That way Sue and I will know about how many rows to get clearly marked off in advance so that work can proceed promptly. See you there, Tom. So, for all of those who are interested in the garden, this is your official invitation to start work this week. I welcome you. Oh, um, my most important job. I am here to introduce our pastor for the day, who is... <laughs> uh, when... the most embarrassing thing I have ever done, I think. <laughs> Richard Moore is our pastor for the day. He and I are old friends, which makes it even worse that I have heard, have a momentary brain. 43 years. 43 years. <laughs> That's the truth. <laughs> it makes it even worse. <laughs> We've aged pretty well, haven't we? <laughs> Richard was our pastor in Benton Harbor, Michigan, and their youngest daughter was a babe in arms when they came to candidate in Benton Harbor. So we go back a long way, and we did warn him about how cold it could get in Nina, Wisconsin, when he decided to leave. But um, we welcome you, and we welcome Martha this morning. And uh, I'm so happy you're here to lead us in worship. Yeah, first name. Please stand and join me in the call to worship. We gather to worship the risen Christ. Praise, Praise to Christ, the good shepherd. Alleluia. Praise to Christ, the gate. Alleluia. Praise to Christ, the Lamb. Alleluia. Praise to Christ, our Savior. Christ, Christ is risen still. Alleluia.
trusting that God's power creates new heavens and a new earth, we confidently confess our sins, assured that we too are renewed through Jesus Christ, who is our risen Lord. Let us join together in our prayer of confession. Keeper of heaven and earth, guardian of our coming and going forth, our times of tender reflection and our moments of turmoil. Our lives are fragile. We violate each other in personal relationships as nations, as inept keepers of life's beauty. Sharpen our sensitivity. Stir in us preference for listening over speaking, for tenderness over aggression, for solidarity and community over alienation and fear. Deepen for us the meaning of the resurrection of the deep word transformation. But embody those words. In our baptism, we are sealed by the Holy Spirit and marked as Christ's own forever. Let us stand and receive the assurance of God's grace. Hear the good news of God's promise. I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. The peace of Christ be with you. We you. You greet one another in that way, and I'm told that this is the camera to, to, to greet people at home this morning. So. And greet one another with the peace of Christ. your truth, and open our minds to your spirit, that as the scriptures are read and your word is proclaimed, we may hear with joy what you say to us today. Amen. This first scripture lesson is from the book of Psalm, chapter 23. O Lord, open my lips and my mouth will declare your praise. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. 
You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. The Gospel reading is from John chapter 10, verses 1 through 10. Very truly, I tell you, anyone who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate, but climbs in by another way, is a thief and a bandit. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes ahead of them, and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. They will not follow a stranger, but they will run from him because they do not know the voice of strangers. Jesus used this figure of speech with them, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. So again, Jesus said to them, Very truly, I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who come before me are thieves and bandits, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters by me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. This is the good news which we have received, in which we stand, and by which we are saved. Thanks be to God, who calls us to connect, inspire, and serve. I got one volunteer to come forward here. I see that. <laughs> and hey, you've got money for the pail. <laughs> All right. I brought some too. Do you want to put it in? Is there anybody else going to come in? Maybe we can split this up. Let me see what I got here. Oh, my. Oh, be careful. I don't got that. Well, here, the got some. Oh, here. More here. You want some more? <laughs> here you go. <laughs> we'll put that in too. I like I like that noisy bucket. <laughs> I really do. I know you all think I'm crazy. The crazy preacher that comes to put money in the we make noise with that bucket it reminds us know if you were listening carefully my mic doesn't seem to be doing too well here. Okay, well, that's all right. I'm going to back up just a little. It's fading in and out, isn't it? Maybe I'm getting a message from someplace. 
But the, the psalm, it's Psalm 23. Uh, do you know the psalm? Psalm 23, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. It's a great psalm. What does a shepherd do? Do you know? Yeah, takes care of the sheep. Have you ever seen a shepherd? No. Well, I wonder what we compare that to. Maybe like our parents. Our parents take care of us, right? God is like a parent. That's right. Takes care of all of us. And for that, we are really thankful, aren't we? Yeah. All right. And because we're thankful, we give gifts, right? To help others. All right. Well, it's nice to see you this morning. Thank you for coming up. And, um, oh, I like your sneakers. Are they new? Oh. Oh, wow. Those are cool. I need a pair. I got some neat socks, but I need some really neat sneakers to go with. <laughs> okay. Well, uh, let's, let's have a prayer together. Gracious God, we thank you that you are our shepherd and that you do look after us. We give you thanks for the love that you give us, love which we can share with all your people everywhere. Amen. All right, well, thanks for coming up.
I always appreciate it when somebody else forgets a name because I do that all the time. I do. And I look out here and I see there are some of you who actually wear name tags. And I think those of you who don't have name tags on need to know that those people don't wear their name tags so they don't forget who they are. <laughs> They're wearing them so you won't forget who they are. It's important. And I was thinking about this um, as I was getting ready to, uh, to come here and thinking that there are people here that I see all the time but I really don't know your names very well. Um, so let this be an encouragement to get your own name tag. I, do you have them? Do they hand them out? They give them out? Why don't you wear them? <laughs> it would be so nice. <laughs> oh well, I hope I'm not beating a dead horse here. <laughs> So, a little while ago, I was surfing the internet, and I came across another Presbyterian preacher. And uh, at least he said he was Presbyterian, or they said he was Presbyterian. I, I have my suspicions, though. <laughs> because he was, he was preaching on this Psalm 23 text. He was preaching on the Lord is my shepherd, and so on and so forth. And he was going on at length about how stupid sheep are. He said, he said, they have to be guided everywhere. And not only are they stupid, they are lazy, he said. Well, I was pretty sure where this preacher was going next. He was going to compare his flock, if he had one, to the sheep, stupid and lazy. So I pulled the plug on him. <laughs> I don't want to hear the rest of that. Who wants to be compared to something that's stupid and lazy? You? Me neither. But you know, when somebody goes off on something like that, I often think, I need to, to get better informed myself. So I, I, uh, I googled sheep on the internet and I came up with something that su it surprised me a bit, uh, although I thought that the preacher was kind of harsh in his judgment, but I wanted to find out more. And it turns out there's a, there's a study from the University of Illinois that uh, says this about sheep. Their flocking behavior and quickness to flee and panic can make shepherding difficult for those who are uninitiated. But sheep are on a par with cattle uh, when it comes to animal IQ. I wondered a little bit about how animals get an IQ, but, <laughs> but anyway, these are the facts. Sheep can recognize individual human faces. They can. And they can recognize each other's faces and remember them for many years, so the study says. And, um, and they also can differentiate emotional states through facial characteristics. And if worked with patiently, sheep may learn their names. And they also can be led by a halter. And they can, be they can be clicker trained, just like you would train a dog. Some sheep even have been shown to have problem solving capabilities. Whew, that makes me feel pretty good about the sheep and the shepherd things that we read in Psalm 23. I'm very happy now to be compared to a sheep or a lamb, or uh, as a member of the flock. Why not? However, the heart of the 23rd Psalm isn't really so much about the characteristics of sheep as it is about uh, the shepherd that looks after them. Now, I must confess, 
I don't know very much about shepherds and sheep. I have seen videos of them. Love to see them when they have their dogs that go out and round them up. It's fun. But I don't know a whole lot about shepherds and sheep. I do know a little bit more about farmers and their cows. Uh, we have a friend where we have vacationed in Maine who has been a farmer, a dairy farmer, almost his entire life. He's recently been retired, but his name is Blynn, and I, I just love to watch Blynn with his cows. He's amazing. For one thing, and I don't know how he does it, but he knows each of them by name. He's got a name for all 125 or 30 cows that he has. They also have numbers on them. To me, they all look alike. <laughs> You know, I mean, some of them are a little different, but, you know, but he knows them all. And interestingly enough, when one of them dies or, or is, is ill or something, he cares about them like he would one of his children. Well, anyway, uh, one time, Martha and I were out for our, our after-dinner walk. When we were, we were in Maine, we would take a walk after dinner, and we walked up a hill to where the farm is, and then we walk further up a bigger hill, really quite a hill. And then we would come back down on our return trip. And we were coming down one night. It was kind of dusk. And we couldn't believe our eyes. Because there, out in the middle of the road were cows. They were all over the place. They were on the lawn of the next door neighbor. They were, I, they, they'd gotten out through a break in the fence. And uh, this was before cell phones. So uh, we, we tried to, we went to the farmer's house, to Glenn's house, and he wasn't home, his wife wasn't home. So Martha turns to me and says, we better do something about this. <laughs> so uh, we, we tried to, to help. <laughs> and I have to tell you, it wasn't working out so well for me. <laughs> well, I'm a city boy. And uh, big animals like that intimidate me. Martha was doing a lot better. Although it wasn't really working out completely for her either. Finally, we, we found a neighbor down the street there who uh, thought she knew where Blynn had gone. And so she called him on, called the, the, the family where he was visiting, called on the, on the telephone and... Uh, and sure enough, he was there, and he jumped in his truck and hurried back to the farm. And it was so interesting to watch him work. I mean, he gets out of the truck, and he goes up to these cows, and he, he, he slaps them on their hindquarters and talks to them, and all of a sudden, one by one, in a single file, no less, they go back into the pasture. It was wonderful to see. And I, I kind of imagine that shepherds and sheep kind of work a little bit in the same way. Of course, in the psalm, we realize that the shepherd and the sheep are really metaphors. Uh, God is the shepherd, and we are not the... We are not the so stupid sheep, or the necessarily lazy ones either. And uh, the shepherd lovingly and faithfully cares for the sheep for us. You know, in the King James Version, the one that so many of us know by heart, that wasn't the one that was read this morning, that was the NRSV, but in the King James Version, I think most of you probably know that version of this. Um, anyway, uh, it says, the shepherd leads the sheep beside the still waters. Literally, in the Hebrew text, it's to the waters of rest. We all know how important water is to life itself. And then it continues, he restoreth my soul. But as translators like to point out, a better rendering for the word soul is my whole self. In ancient Israel, there was no such thing as a separate entity of soul, or a separate entity as a, as a soul. In fact, the word for soul in Hebrew is nefesh, and it really means 
life itself, the, the whole life. So it, it, in ancient Israel, they understood our lives as heart, mind, and body as a complete, a complete entity. It wasn't separated and divided off. Uh, so God, our shepherd, restores our whole self our whole being. And not only that, the shepherd leads us in the paths of righteousness. That is, the paths of just and loving relationship with God and with each other. Whenever you run across the word righteousness in Scripture, it is always about relationship. Relationship between one another. It's not about goody two-shoes or something like that. It's about relationship. And even though, the psalmist says, we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, or literally, the valley of deepest darkness or despair, that's the Hebrew, the shepherd is always beside us. In the face of our enemies, the shepherd prepares a table before us to see that we are well nourished and guarded from evil. I can imagine the shepherd and the sheep, the shepherd defending the sheep from the wolves that would come after them. Well, the next part's the best of all. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever, it says in King James. However, uh, I want to say something about what the Hebrew means, because the Hebrew it makes it more expansive. But let me, before I do that, it's just to say, this is, this is the best part of all, because it talks about returning to the household of the Lord where I may live out all my days. Gives a different nuance there than it would be. Just I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. One gets the idea, well, that means when I die, I get to go be with God. That isn't the sense in the psalm. And I love this reference to God's household. And I do have this thing about, for me, I, I'm not crazy about the use of the word kingdom. We see kingdom in the New Testament all the time, and I understand why it's used, because kingdom was, uh, uh, the kingdom of God was always an alternative to Caesar's kingdom. But I like the word household so, so much more because it is so much more comprehensive for modern day people. King, king, kingdom is antiquated. It's kind of we don't use that word any, anywhere else except what we read in the New Testament. So, uh, household, I love that word. Um, the household of the Lord. And I like it so much because the realm of God is akin to a well-run household. And all of us know exactly what a well-run household looks like. It is a place where everybody can live a decent life, where everybody has enough food, education, medical care, support, acceptance, and love in order to prosper. Or we can say with Jesus, where everyone has an abundant life. And the good news is that it isn't offered simply as a reward for when you die. It is offered as a challenge to live into while we are still here. And I say as a challenge to live into because it calls us to understand that this isn't just a personal thing of dwelling in God's household. It is a household full of all God's people. And that's what the household is supposed to look like. And that's what the kind of household all of us are invited to work toward. Well, I'll leave it at there. As I mentioned at the start of this, I don't know a whole lot about shepherds and their sheep. 
I know a little bit more about cows and, their, and the farmers. What I do know a lot about is family life and parenting. Parenting is a lot like shepherding, it seems to me, with, with all those attributes in the 23rd Psalm. The ultimate parent and shepherd, of course, is the God of love, whom we know so well in Jesus. The one who has redeemed us, who has called us by name, and claimed us as God's own. have any joys or concerns that you would like to share at this time?
Oh my, did you all hear that? No. Yeah, uh, I always call him Red. I don't think you do up here, do you? You do? Okay. Red's niece's son has leukemia, and the situation is pretty grave at this point. To that we say, God in your mercy. Are there others, other concerns? Yes. Well, a few weeks ago I told you that my brother-in-law, Bill's brother, twin brother, um, was sick and he did die. And um, unfortunately I have more news from that family. His wife, Liz Ann, my sister-in-law, just had a very bad stroke, and she is in a, in a hospital, a nurse in a intensive care in Washington, D.C. right now. Okay. And so I just want you to think of their, their family has been going through quite a lot lately. Um, they had four children, and it's not very helpful. They're taking turns and going to see her, doing all that they can, and I just found this out this week. So, so just keep them in your thoughts, and a, I, the death I, in, in that family, and then and, and a stroke. And my sister-in-law. Yeah, and to that we say, God in your mercy. Thank you. Are there any others? Let us pray. Holy One, we give you thanks that we can be here this morning, and if not here, that we can watch online and be part of this community of faith. We give thanks that you call us together as a people and that you give us your powerful spirit to go forth and serve you. God, in your mercy, sovereign one, we pray for this weary world where there is so much turmoil, heartache, and pain. God, in your mercy. Hear our Today we remember those who are devastated by all sorts of catastrophes, floods, tornadoes, chemical spills, earthquakes. God, in your mercy. Hear our we are mindful, too, of those who are caught in the ravages of war in Sudan, particularly, and Ukraine, and other conflicts in Syria and around the world. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We also lift before you this morning the tragedies of gun violence that have become so much a part of everyday life in our country. We remember the families and the people where this has, this has happened. God, in your mercy. For those who have died and for those they leave behind, that they may, may find some semblance of strength and comfort. God, in your mercy. We pray for refugees, for those who have lost their homes and their livelihoods. God, in your mercy. We think today of all those here in our midst and beyond who walk more in the darkness than in the light. Be with those who long to find joy beyond sorrow, healing beyond hurt, peace beyond conflict, and dawn after the darkness of night. God, in your mercy. As we come to another Earth Day, we are reminded, gracious one, of how 
our earth is hurting and needs to be healed. We pray that more and more of us will do more and more that we are able in order to change things and to bring about that time, as the prophet said, when the flowers will again bloom in the desert. God, in your mercy, <clears throat> instill within us as a people a resolve to reach out in loving concern to neighbors and strangers who stand in need. And be with all who are able to help, whether here, nearby, or across the globe, with those who are in immense suffering. Be with them, give them strength, resilience, and ability to continue their work. God, in your mercy. Indeed, we ask you to hear our prayers, Holy One, as we make them in the name of your beloved, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Out of the abundance of God's own life, we have received the abundance of God's creation God's word and God's love. And so with gladness, let us present the offerings of our life and labor to the Lord. one voice. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. God, whose giving knows no ending, we give our thanks and praise for your goodness to us. And we dedicate to you our thoughts, our words, our gifts, our deeds, the work of our hands, 
and the love of our hearts. Uphold us today in the power of your Holy Spirit and keep us forever in your loving embrace. I can't think of a better charge to you than the hymn we just sang. And so, may you go forth, may the, the grace, mercy, peace, love, and all good gifts of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you and with those whom you love. And yes, with those whom you struggle to love this day, this night, and even forevermore.